This week on Gun Talk, we head to the Black Hills Ammunition Factory in South Dakota and see what goes into making quality ammo. We'll test it in the lab and at long range and get a look at some new rifles. When Jeff Hoffman was a full-time police officer, he couldn't afford to shoot as much as he wanted, so he started hand-loading his ammo. You could say he never quit. Now he's the president and founder of Black Hills Ammunition in Rapid City, South Dakota. Jeff is still a senior sniper for the local police force. He's also an avid hunter. As a result, he makes ammo for law enforcement, military, self-defense, and target shooting. To understand the differences, you need to know what goes into a cartridge. Jeff, ammunition is really just components, and rifle ammo is just four components, right? That's correct. Okay, but some people call them bullets when they're really talking about cartridges. Explain what goes into a cartridge. People say, throw me some bullets. They're in a gunfight on TV, and they say, throw me some bullets, I'm out. Well, he really doesn't want bullets. What he wants is ammunition. Right. And as you, as you were saying, with in, to, uh, in an ammunition cartridge, you've got four components, one of which is the bullet. Which is what you have in your hand. Which there. is what you have in the bullet. That's the projectile. Uh, that, that's the projectile. That's the part that actually goes down range every time you pull the trigger. Okay. Uh, and that's only one of the, the, the four components. Components. You've got the cartridge case, which basically holds the whole thing together, right. uh, acts as an envelope, but also acts as a gas seal uh, when the cartridge is pressurized uh, when it goes off. You've got the primer in the in the back. The primer can be viewed as the ignition switch for the for the whole thing. When you pull the trigger on a gun, either a striker or a hammer will go forward and it will strike the primer, which mm -hmm. is basically the ignition switch. When that detonates, it shoots hot gas into the area where the where the propellant is, the, the, the other part of the... The, the propellant would gun, gun, gun powder. Yeah, and it's inside the case, so the primer basically shoots, if you will, fire. In correct. There. It ignites the powder. That's correct. And then w when that fire gets into where the gunpowder is, it ignites the gunpowder. Now, gunpowder doesn't technically detonate or explode. It's a deflagration, a very rapid burning. When that happens, it gives off gas, and that gas will reach pressures of 10 to 60,000 psi, and then that, that, pushes that, that the gas pressure, you bet, will push that bullet down the, down the barrel. In a properly right. constructed gun, it has to vent somewhere, and the correct place for that to vent is to propel that bullet down the barrel and out uh, on its way to the target. Okay, so there's really only four things. You have a primer, primer. a case, a bullet on top, and the powder inside. The truth is, there's not much difference between what a hand loader does and what goes on at a modern ammo factory. Hey Jeff, this is where you put all those components together, isn't it? Correct. So explain to me what this is doing. You got a single line, comes in as I guess the primed brass, right? And it comes out as ammo, but what happens along the way? We're, we're doing essentially the same thing that hand loaders do, only on a, a production basis with a few more safeguards and double checks built in, Tom. Okay. Uh, up here is the cartridge cases. The cartridge cases start here. They're fed down this tube. Uh, they, they hit the bottom here where the track will grab it. Every time that head would rise, the track would index over one, then the head would come down, and that performs a different step on, on that brass. Uh, this machine will, runs relatively slowly compared to most of the large manufacturers. This machine, a good trained operator, can produce 15 to 20,000 rounds per day, uh, and it's all quality production because our operators aren't trained just to run the machine. They're trained to make good ammunition. So they're constantly uh, inspecting the brass. In this case, Marty's inspecting the brass, looking for case mouth variations, any, any minor splits, dents. Um, and that brass has all been previously inspected. Right, but you inspect it anyway. And we, we inspect it again. Right. Um, and then uh, he's also checking length of the case. He's gauging them for proper headspace, proper dimensions, uh, making sure it's got the right amount of crimp. He's checking that continuously as he's producing ammunition. How good is the Black Hills ammo? When we got to the range, Jeff spotted a fly on the target, and you know what happened next. Yeah, we got it pretty well, pretty well zero. There's that fly. Okay, he's on the right edge of the left-hand paper. Take him.
I don't know. We'll have to inspect for flood debris. <laughs> but you're going to have to carry them out of here. You know that. <laughs> Michael Guerra from Colt joined us with some of their rifles. Mike's a shooter and a hunter, as we saw on an earlier tactical hog hunt. He glassed the targets as Jeff walked the hits downrange. We worked the Colt long range rifle out to 500 yards and were able to see just how accurate this rifle is, even with the wind picking up. But target ammo probably isn't right for hunting. The match bullets, they're absolutely tremendous for what they're designed for. They're designed for long range accuracy or close range accuracy. They're designed purely for accuracy, right. punching paper with no concern at all, whatever, what happens when it hits game. Uh, for the game animal to, to have the interest of the game animal being humane, uh, not losing animals, you want to use a game bullet on, on game animals. But Jeff wasn't through. He wanted to show what this new Colt rifle would do at 600 yards. Which target you like? You know what, right at this moment, it's coming kind of straight towards us. I'm gonna try it just straight on. Okay, right hand target? On the right hand target. Okay, spotter's ready. There we go. Boy, that is fabulous. That is, I mean, right on the dot, just on the top edge. Sending. Send it. About two inches left of where you hit before, right there on the dot. Right below that last right one. Right below the last one. Oh. Wind, got to take Wind it. caught it a little bit left. Yep. So we'll take it a little bit to the right edge. There we go. That's pretty sweet. That shows what you can do with a rifle that's accurate, an ammo that's good, but most of all, a Somebody shooter. Knows the wind and knows how to shoot. A shooter who knows what he's doing. Next up, Jeff takes the Ruger Scout Rifle out to 600 yards. 